Sharaji has been explaining previous days according to the instruction given by the late Venerable Mahasi Sharaji that only if one knows the true nature one discerns Udayavaya arising and passing away. Knowing the true nature one comes to discern the beginning and the end. In order to discern, one should know the object with aim and effort, with sustained mindfulness, so that the noting mind falls on the object and one comes to know the true nature and one discerns unique individual characteristics. One sees that objects arise and after a while it it passes away. By knowing the true nature, one discerns the characteristic of arising and passing away. When one sees the dissolution of the object, one comes to understand that the object that has been noted is impermanent suffering and non-self. Based on the object that the person is able to note, effectively one can remove the wrong view of permanent good and self. It happens that the objects refuse that they are a permanent for it implies that these objects are like admitting they are impermanent. When one sees the object arising and passing away, it seems that the object is admitting itself that it is not permanent. When one discerns impermanent, one also sees it as suffering. And these objects are not created by anyone. They arise due to circumstances. Without the cause, without the favorable circumstances, these objects will not arise. So in this way, one comes to understand impermanent suffering and non-self. When one discerns impermanence, one also comes to discern dukkha and anatta. Based on the object that the person is able to note properly, effectively, one discerns impermanent suffering and non-self, and one develops samasana jnana, the beginning of vipassana jnana, and one removes the wrong view of permanent good and self. When one discerns impermanence, one removes the wrong perception that things are permanent. As the yogi continues to practice, yogi discerns arising present and dissolution, and the yogi removes the wrong view that things are permanent. Every time the yogi is being mindful, he, she removes the wrong view of permanent, and one also removes conceit. When one sees the characteristic of dukkha, one will no longer have the wrong view that things are good. When one sees that rising and passing away are constantly tormenting, one comes to understand that 
there is nothing good. Seeing things is not good, hearing things is not good, smelling things is not good. Seeing things as not good, one will no longer crave. Only when one thinks of things as good, there will be craving. When one sees things as suffering, no good, one will no longer crave in them. Seeing Dukkha suffering, one also removes the view that things are good and one will no longer crave on them. And one also sees that there is no permanent thing that is good, there is nothing such as self or soul. So in this way, one removes the wrong view of permanence and when one develops samasana, jnana, tatna, mana and deity, craving, conceit and wrong view will no longer get the chance to prolong. If a person is overwhelmed by the dhatna, mana and diti, craving, conceit and wrong view, one is inferior. Only if one can be free from the gravity of these, one will be uplifted. In order to be free from the gravity of these defilements, one needs to be mindful at the moment the object arises so that one comes to know the true nature. By practicing correctly, one removes not knowing. Removing not knowing, one will be uplifted and one comes to understand the characteristic of impermanent suffering and not-self. Discerning the characteristic of impermanent suffering and non-self, one removes the wrong view of permanent good and self, and thus one is removing the papancha, the namana deity, craving conceit and wrong view, which are prolonging the, the samsara. So one should practice correctly to develop knowledge. By developing knowledge, one will be free from the gravity of these defilements. So that his or her practice, his or her dharma is uplifting the person, protecting, saving the person so that he, she will not be inferior. The person who practices the Dhamma systematically, the Dhamma uplifts the person and thus the person also understands the quality, the virtues of the Dhamma. When one gains the knowledge, discerning fast arising and passing away, one sees that these objects are in a complete flux. The old object giving rise to new, the old object passes away, new object arises. The object arises at one moment and passes away at another. So in this way, one sees the fast arising and passing away. Based on the object that the yogi is able to note effectively, one gains Sambodha Sukha, knowledge by, sorry, happiness by attaining knowledge. When the yogi is experiencing Vedana, unpleasant sensation, yogi does not feel comfortable. But as the yogi overcomes unpleasant sensations, yogi 
gain happiness. And the happiness that is gained through the practice excels many times than the worldly happiness. The Dhamma happiness excels many times than the human happiness and Deva happiness. By noting continuously, one comes to know cause and effect. One comes to know the true nature of objects. When one discerns, one destroys the moha, delusion, that is covering the truth. Discerning the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self, one removes the darkness of moha, delusion, that is concealing the true nature. One discerns the unique individual characteristics of Nama Rupa and one also discerns the common characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. So gaining knowledge, one discerns the unique individual characteristics and common characteristics and one destroys the darkness, the delusion darkness. What does moha, delusion, conceal? Delusion conceals the true nature, the true characteristics. Moha conceals so that unique individual characteristic will not be discerned and moha conceals so that the common characteristics will not be known. So in this way, moha blinds the present with darkness. When noting the presently arising object, the dhammas, the nama rupa dhammas which are arising, and by being mindful of them, one comes to see the unique individual characteristics. In order to discern the unique individual characteristics, one should note the object with aim and effort. One's noting mind should reach the object. One's mind should be calm and collected. When one can note the object with concentrated mind, calm and collected on the object, one comes to discern the unique individual characteristic and common characteristics and thus one removes or destroys delusion that has been concealing the nature, concealing the characteristics. When the noting mind falls on the true nature, one comes to know the true nature. When the noting mind falls on the characteristic of impermanent suffering and non-self, one discerns the characteristics. So in this way, one destroys moha, delusion, that has been concealing sabhava lekana and samanya lekana, unique individual characteristic and common characteristic. Vichupada avicca nirodo, meaning when knowledge arises, ignorance will be destroyed. When knowledge arises, ignorance will be destroyed. One will not be uncertain, big or dim, but one will discern clearly. And one also discerns the arising and passing away of the objects. And one discerns that things are impermanent, suffering and not self. So in this way, 
asamoha pachupatana, meaning it manifests as not being deluded, not being ignorant, and one discerns clearly. So in this way, one discerns clearly of the characteristics and one will be developing, one will be discerning the characteristic function and manifestation of Panya. The approximate cause of Panya, wisdom, knowledge, is Kanika Samadhi, momentary concentration. When Kanika Samadhi, momentary concentration develops, one discerns correctly so that the unique individual characteristics and common characteristics are discerned clearly. So in this way, Kanika Samadhi, momentary concentration, is the proximate cause for knowledge to arise. In order that the knowledge should arise, one should be noting the presently arising object with aim and effort when these mental strengths are present, one is removing the darkness of delusion. By being mindful of the object, when one discerns the unique individual characteristics, then one will see the common characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. When one understands clearly the impermanent suffering and non-self, one removes the delusion that has been concealing so that beings cannot uh, see the truth. So in this way, one removes delusion. Delusion will not arise as one develops knowledge. When one understands that things are impermanent, one will no longer crave onto these things. There will be nipita. One becomes bored with them. One sees them as danger. In Viragaya, one will also be free from craving. In Nirodaya, delusion also comes to cessation momentarily. When Vicha knowledge arises, Vicha ignorance will come to a sea. If one does not know correctly, one will crave on things. But knowing correctly, one will no longer crave. And thus, craving will be removed. Clinging will also be removed. When seeing the impermanent suffering and non-self, one removes the wrong view of permanent good and self. So wrong view come to a cessation as it has it does not have any chance to arise. If one has avijja, dana and upadana, ignorance, craving and clinging, these avijja, dana and upadana lead to wholesome deeds that lead to further assistances and avijja dana upadana also lead to good and bad deeds that result in further assistances. When one removes avijja dana and upadana, ignorance, craving and clinging, one will no longer be performing wholesome and unwholesome deeds that lead to further assistances. When there is no 
wholesome and unwholesome deeds that lead to further assistances, the resultant will also come to a stop. So in this way, removing vijjadana and upadana, ignorance, craving and clinging, one is stopping the round of deeds that lead to further assistances, stopping the round of deeds, the resultants, immediate resultants and subsequent resultants will also come to a cessation. In this way, there will be the Danga Niroda, momentary concentration. Noting the presently arising object, when one discerns cause and effect, when one discerns the unique individual characteristics and common characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self, one develops knowledge and one will become Takumanda, a person who has knowledge I. Continuing to practice according to the teaching of the Buddha, one develops knowledge stage by stage so that he, she progresses in the practice. Saraji gives an example when one sees a row of termites from a distance, one will think it, it is a light. Taking a closer look, one sees each an individual termite moving separately from one another. In the same way, when one observes the object very closely, one will see it very clearly and distinctly and one develops knowledge. Every time one notes the object precisely, one discerns clearly, distinctly and one removes ignorance, craving and clinging. When crave, ignorance, craving, clinging are coming to a momentary cessation, one will have momentary cessation. So one should practice in order to accumulate momentary cessation. By accumulating momentary cessation, finally one will attain apavata, the ultimate cessation. So when one attains Nibbana, it will become Apavata, the cessation of the Nama Rupa. Before one attains Nibbana, there will be Pavata, continuous arising of the Nama Rupa phenomena. Attaining Nibbana, one attains Apavata, the ultimate cessation. When one attains Nibbana, one removes, abandons the defilement that has been weakened by Vipassana. Vipassana weakens the Gilesa defilement and when one attains Nibbana, the defilements that have been weakened become uprooted. When one becomes a Sudhampana, the stream enderer, one removes Sakaya Deti, Vichikicha, and Silabra Paramasa, one removes wrong view and one removes wrong view and doubt by becoming a Sotapanna. In order to attain the ultimate cessation, one should develop momentary cessation. One should note the object precisely in order to develop knowledge. Developing knowledge, one is developing momentary cessation. 
vipassana knowledge in order to attain vipassana knowledge one should discern the arising and passing away of the objects another way one should discern the beginning and the end of objects some of the meditation teachers are giving instruction to look for the beginning and the end of objects and Saraji will explain on this usually most yogis who come from the west some yogi they are looking for the beginning and the end of objects in the beginning of the practice one will not see the beginning and the end of objects the beginning and the end will not be obvious to the person in the beginning of the practice and one should not deliberately look for the beginning and the end of objects what one should observing is the presently arising objects which are paramatha the ultimate reality one should be observing bhuta the nama rupa phenomena that are arising at the present moment the nama rupa phenomena that are arising at the present moment are paramatha ultimate reality which arise due to their causes arising and passing away is not paramatha it is not ultimate reality these are the manner that are coming together with the paramatha so if one is observing the manner one will be one will not be seeing the paramatha the ultimate reality some of the yogi when they are noting rising and falling of the atomment they are looking for the beginning and the end so some of them when they come to the interview they report they see the beginning and the end of objects or sometimes they say they only see the middle of the object sometimes they say they only see the end of objects so charaji say not to look for the beginning middle and the end of objects arising or passing away it's just the manner it is not the paramatha it is not the ultimate reality if one is looking for the beginning or the end one will be looking for the manner and thus one will not see the sabhava one will not see the unique individual characteristic so when one knows the object what kind of nature he she comes to know is it the stiffness or tension or movement or warmth or heat or cold so one should know the true nature when noting the object and one should not be deliberately looking for the beginning middle and the end of object what one should be observing is the true nature when one discerns the true nature the beginning and the end will become obvious the beginning and the end will manifest automatically so one should be discerning the true nature by discerning the true nature one automatically sees the beginning and the end so before this stage if one is deliberately looking for the beginning and the end one is wasting one time as one will not see the true nature as he she is looking for the beginning or the end it is a pity 
to be wasting one's time to deliberately look for a beginning and the end, as one will fail to see the true nature. Synergy gives an example when one wants to buy a dress, one goes to a boutique, choose a dress. When one sees a dress that has a good design, good fabric, and also the way it is sewn is good and neat, then one comes to like it. So long as one does not see any flaws, so long as one does not see any holes in the dress, one will like it. If one sees the holes in the dress, one will no longer like the dress. So in the same way, so long as one does not see the impermanent suffering and non-self, one will crave on two things. When one sees that thing or things are impermanent, suffering and non-self, one will no longer crave. So Chalaji gives an example, when looking for a dress, one should look thoroughly whether if there are any holes or any torn in the dress. If one is looking in the air, one will not see the holes or one will not see the torn. So one should look carefully, thoroughly on the dress in order to see if they are any holes. When observing the object, one should observe carefully, precisely, so that one comes to see Sabhava Lekana and Samanya Lekana, unique individual characteristics and common characteristics. As one is mindful of the object, when one discerns the characteristics, unique individual characteristics, the manner of arising and passing away will automatically become obvious to the yogi. So it is something one something that will become obvious by noting the object. So one should be careful not to misunderstand it. And Saraji doesn't know if there are still yogis who are looking for the beginning and the end of objects. The meditation teachers are guiding the yogis to note the object with aim and effort, with sustained mindfulness. So there is a question, where should the mindfulness cover? So the mindfulness should cover from the very beginning of the object all the way through till the end. So when the yogi is noting the object, the awareness should cover from the very beginning of the object all the way through till the end. It shows the field of awareness. So when the yogis are asked to follow the object from the very beginning all the way through till the end, some of the yogis misunderstood that they should be looking for beginning and the end. So looking for the beginning and the end of object, it is not a correct method. So when rising of the abdomen arises, one should be mindful from the very beginning of the rising all the way through till the end. So one should not be confused about it. And so as we give the sample, if there are three holes in the dress, the holes are in the dress and the holes are not itself, but they are in the dress. So it is connecting with the dress. So in the same way, the beginning 
and the end or the arising and passing away, it is not the true Brahmata, it is not the true uh, ultimate reality, but they are the characteristics and they are called Panyati Gatika. They are like concept for so the characteristic of impermanent suffering and non self, or the beginning and the end of objects are just like concept and one should not be observing them. What one should observe is Paramatta, the ultimate reality. As the yogi notes the presently arising object continuously, his or her Viriya Sati Samadhi, effort, mindfulness and concentration will become strengthened and he, she will be developing knowledge stage by stage. When the yogi gains the knowledge, discerning fast arising and passing away, yogi gains Udhyadaya Jnana, yogi experiences happiness, joy, that is very special. And Saraji will continue to play tomorrow. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.